Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real. We're now in the second half of 1963, where hopefully we are going to be sending Tranquility on its first mission. Tranquility being our series of rockets that will send humans around the moon and hopefully orbit it. We also have more leg fast on its approach to Mars, and we've got another few missions up our sleeves for the second half of this year. So yeah, talking about new missions that we are going to be doing, this is going to be Helios, and it's so named because we are going to be going incredibly close to the sun. That's right, this mission we are going to attempt to get a Mercury flyby, just a flyby. We are not going to go for a Mercury orbit yet because, well, quite honestly, that requires a ludicrous amount of Delta V. I think it takes around eight and a half thousand meters per second of Delta V to capture at Mercury if you do a standard home and transfer from Earth. So that is quite frankly out of our budget at the moment, but not to worry, a flyby will still get us funding from Mission Control and we can get a little bit of science as we are flying by Mercury. I think we will probably only be in Mercury's sphere of influence for about five hours because we will be going so fast. However, that's still five hours of scientific experiments that we can actually gain. Now, Helios, as I did mention in the build episode for SM64, is the first of my new series of interplanetary probes where I've picked up that modular girder adapter, flipped it upside down, and then stuck an integral tank on the bottom of it. And I'm just really liking the look of this design at the moment. You can see I've got some cameras on there as well. We've obviously got all of our scientific experiments and I'm just trying to work out how small I need to make this thing so that the magnetometer can actually extend past it. Now, I've got that integral tank on there with an engine. We're not really gonna need much fuel in that stage. As I have said, we're not going to orbit. That stage is only going to be for deep space maneuvers if and when we need to perform them to actually, well, fine tune our encounter to Mercury because that hydrolock stage with the RL-10, that's just gonna be used near Earth. So I did want to put a little bit of fuel in that final probe core. Now, this thing does weigh less than six and a half tons. So we get to use the hydro rocket again, something we haven't used for quite a while. But yep, that was, well, <laughs> it was meant to be Helios one, but it looks like I accidentally missed out the S. So that is only going to be Helio one. So. Yeah, oh, my typing. My typing did not seem to be on point for this episode, but you can see we've built that up already and it is on the launch pad waiting for our Mercury transfer window to come by. That thing really didn't take long to build at all because, well, the Hydra rocket, the Hydra launch vehicle does not take any time whatsoever. It's so small. We can fit that on the 150 ton launch pad. So yeah, those things, well, doesn't take any time at all now that we've got quite a few build points to our name as well. But here we have our first actual exciting event of this episode, more leg on its Mars approach on the 8th of September 1963. Now that AJ-10 advanced engine fired just fine then, and we are fast on our way to capturing into a Mars orbit. Now, more leg was the Mars Orbiter and Reconnaissance Landing Experiment Gambit. That is what that acronym stood for. So. In that little shell at the top, we do have a lander, which hopefully we are going to land on the surface of Mars. So we've already landed on the surface of Venus, but yep, Mars is the next place to go. Obviously, Mars is relatively difficult to land on because the atmosphere is so thin that, well, you can use parachutes, but you also need to use an engine. And trust me, this went through so many tests in order to figure out the configuration of the parachutes using real chutes so that they didn't rip up in the atmosphere and that they managed to get our little lander safely down. But yeah, I did figure it out. Here we can see our drogue chutes have deployed, our main chutes have deployed. We're still coming down at around 10 meters per second, so we are gonna need that engine at the bottom to fire off, but Unfortunately, I am not very good at landing, it would appear, and I came down a little bit too hard and ended up breaking two of those landing legs. But fortunately, that's fine. We didn't really need this. That, that was absolutely fine. That probe has done its job amicably. We have landed on Mars, and yeah. 
So that's another planet to tick off of our lists of planets that we want to land on. Eventually, well, I said at the beginning of this series that I wanted to land humans on Jupiter. Obviously, that is not going to happen because, well, quite frankly, that was just a little bit of a silly little bit of an introduction. So, but anyway, yeah, that's another planet that we have landed on. And I am sure we are going to be landing on many, many more in the future. Well, it would be nice. It would be nice to get humans over to Mars at some point soon as well. Obviously, we haven't even got humans to the moon yet. That is coming very fast, though. We obviously have tranquility, which is going to be our attempt at, yeah, sending, sending man to the moon for the first time. But first, we do have Mercury. So here we have Helio-1 on a Hydro Redux launch vehicle on the 8th of October, 1963. Once again, we are launching at night, I do apologise for that. I launched these into the plane of the moon, so using MechJeb, sometimes it, yeah, it just so happens that we do launch at night. Well, quite often, quite often it seems we launch at night, which is a little bit of a shame because you don't really get to see the full launch. Well, you can see it, but it's, obviously it's, it's dark, so you can't see it properly, but the launch went off fine. Hydra is a very reliable vehicle with that LR87 LH2 sustainer stage in the middle and two LR89 boosters. We light them all at the launch, so there's very little chance of an ignition failure to cause that launch vehicle to fail. But there you can see we do have an encounter with Mercury, although it is rather far. So we are going to have to perform a deep space maneuver in order to correct that later on. So with our Helio probe fast on its way to Mercury, the next thing that we have in our list is going to be Tranquility 1. But I have said that this is going to be our attempt at sending man on a, well, lunar orbit, but we are not going to be doing that with Tranquility 1. So one thing that I like to do before sending humans off to the moon is to test them in low Earth orbit. So here we have Tranquility 1 on the 3rd of November 1963 on the Tranquility launch vehicle. Yes, this launch vehicle was designed specifically for this mission, as I mentioned. I think, yeah, no, I did build this all in a build episode. So obviously got to flick on those instrument lights to see what we're actually looking at whilst we're in the cockpit. So anyway, yes, before we came into this section of the video, before we actually saw the launch, I did mention this rocket is not going to go to the moon. And there is a reason for that. Because obviously when you go to the moon, it's, well, it takes around four days to get there. There was one of the, <laughs> the boosters there just kind of catching the end of that boat tail there. I was a little bit worried. I had my finger over the backspace to perform an abort, but luckily we were able to get clear of that booster anyway. But anyway, <laughs> yes, I get distracted. What was I saying about, yeah, the reason why this isn't going to go to the moon is because I want to test out this rocket. I want to test this out for about 14 days, for two weeks, 12 days. I think it was 12 days eventually. If you do it to the moon and something starts going wrong, you are maybe you're a day in and then you realize that your liquid hydrogen is going to run out. You've not put enough MLI layers on or something silly like that. Well, you're gonna get halfway to the moon and then you're gonna realize, oh damn, it's gonna take me like another five, six days to actually get back from this situation, by which point all of your astronauts are dead because, well, you've run out of power and the fuel cells don't work anymore because you've run out of liquid hydrogen. So I do like doing low earth orbit tests of this and this is exactly what this is. Yeah, we're gonna test this in low earth orbit. If anything does go wrong, then we can get them back down to the surface very, very quickly rather than them being on their way to the moon. Now, I do want to do this for about the time it would take for a lunar mission, so that's why I'm going to keep this in orbit for about 12 days. And then we can see if it all works, if it all works fine. And then once we have the knowledge that it does work, then we can go and send this thing to the moon and that will be coming up in the future that will be tranquility 2 tranquility 2 will be the first thing that we launch which has humans as long as tranquility 1 is successful so 
Now we join New Dawn for a deep space maneuver. New Dawn was, of course, our probe that we are going to send to Jupiter in the hopes of orbiting Ganymede. So, yeah, just a quick deep space maneuver to perform, and then we're gonna go check and see what our, well, what our orbit is gonna be like around Jupiter, and I'm gonna do a quick little bit of editing just to once again check and see if we can get an orbit around Ganymede, because that would be really exciting. I did mention it in the last yearly episode. It is something that I've never done, is to orbit one of the Galilean moons. So here we are. I have messed around with the Maneuver Node Editor, and it looks like we are able to, well, we have enough Delta V on this thing that we are. We are going to get an orbit around Ganymede. So we are full of deep space maneuvers in this episode, because once again, we are going to be joining Helio 1 for a deep space maneuver on the 14th of November. This all took place whilst Tranquility was in orbit. Everything seemed to come at once. Obviously, we didn't have a launch for a really long time. And then everything, everything just all came at once. But there you can see we have raised, well, lowered our Mercury periaps to something a lot better. So we can actually get science from space low around Mercury as well as space high. And then it's only going to take another 80 so days to actually get there. But here we are, back with Tranquility One, who has been in orbit this entire time whilst we have been doing this, and we are returning home on the 15th of November, 1963. Now, obviously, this is a very important part of the mission because, well, we need to make sure that our heat shields all work properly, our parachutes work properly. Unfortunately, we can't really test what a lunar descent would be like with this because, obviously, we haven't gone to the moon, but we can still make sure that, well, we can survive a low Earth orbit re-entry, um, which we did, well, successfully. We did. Those parachutes all work fine as well. Although we did come down and hit the ground at around, I think, nine and a half meters per second. So might be better to land in water because that is rather, rather hard, if I'm going to be particularly honest. So with the success of Tranquility 1, I now know that we have, well, that everything works. And if we were to go to the moon, hopefully we shouldn't have any catastrophic failures. So we're going to train up our next lot of astronauts and they are going to hop on to Tranquility 2 once it's finished. And finally, we will get that all important orbit around the moon. I did realize that I didn't have anything in my build queue, so I have once again gone into the vehicle assembly building and I have skipped out a little part of what I was doing in here because what we are working on now is going to be the Heracles Super 64. Now, this is the Heracles Super because it is basically the format of a Heracles, but it's massive. This thing can lift about 120 tons to low Earth orbit. We've got seven LR87 LH2 on that core sustainer stage and then we are going to have four F1 engines as boosters on the side so it is very much the architecture of a Heracles rocket but this thing can lift this thing has been to the gym and it can lift anything so the idea and we are going to see this momentarily this thing is going to be our basically it's going to be our Saturn V this is going to launch our crewed lunar lander and that is the thing that i mentioned that i have skipped the start of at the beginning of this build section because i kind of want to keep it a secret i kind of want it to be a bit of a reveal when we actually get to the moon or when we actually launch this thing and well yeah i want the lander to be a moon i have decided a name for the lander so obviously the one apollo 11 it was the eagle so i've decided to go the lander for this i think i'm gonna call it the kestrel just a you know big bird of prey and i thought i don't want to straight out copy apollo 11 and you know like the apollo series so yeah we are it's gonna be the kestrel is going to be the lander for this thing here i am messing around with the saturn 5 parts with modular launch towers now the saturn 5 parts do look incredibly cool but obviously this isn't a saturn 5 but it's a six meter diameter, which I believe is the diameter for the transfer stage for the Saturn V. So we can still get some of these to fit rather nicely. And yeah, it works. Just, yeah, really messing around with modular launch towers at the moment. And then, of course, we are going to actually go in and grab what we are going to be launching on this. And I have decided, well, 
Our orbiter mission was called Tranquility. So, our actual landing mission, obviously we've got the Kestrel lander, our landing mission will be Serenity. I thought, yeah, it just kind of is nice. So here we are, we have picked up Serenity 1. Now, our all important lander is obviously in that interstage section there. The top of this has basically been copied and pasted with a few minor adjustments from Tranquility just to make it a little bit better. I think one thing I did was I didn't use a structural tank, I did just use an integral tank for the fuel for that AJ-10 propulsion system. And I still have inset my fuel cells, the, the fuel that's going to be for my fuel cells inside that. However, I've only got that, that integral tank. It's only utilization is 30%. So I kind of figured the bottom half of that tank is where the fuel for that AJ-10 motor will be. And then obviously the top half of the tank is where our hydrolox is going to be for our fuel cells. So yeah, this is Serenity 1 and you can see it's going to take a really, really long time to build. Well, 390 days at the moment, that will go down with tooling, but yes, it's going to be a while before we launch this thing. But there we go. That was the end of 1963 Part 2 and the end of 1963 just all together. And well, we have now designed our Lunar Lander vehicle, so that is of course something that is very, very, very exciting indeed, and I think we should be able to land on the moon by the end of 1964. So, be sure to look out for that, but yes, that is the end of this episode. If you have enjoyed this episode, why not give it a like? If you have really enjoyed this episode and would like to keep up with the content on my channel, please do subscribe. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.